Hey everybody, my name is Taylor Glenn and this is my channel Taylor Tries where I try new things and I try to teach you new things and today I'm gonna teach you how to juggle five balls. Yeah! So the typical five ball pattern that we are learning is called the five ball cascade. It's just like three balls, but it's a little faster and a little higher. Let's take a look. The five ball cascade is easy enough to understand. It's just like any odd numbered pattern. You're throwing the balls across your body to the other hand. I know that's easier said than done, so let's break it down. And before we jump into it, I just want to take a moment and let you know that five balls is hard. If you didn't know that already, you do now. Five balls is hard. It is a hard pattern. It is going to take a lot of time and a lot of dedication, but with these exercises I'm about to teach you, and if you show up and put the time in every day, you will learn the five ball cascade in no time. So let's move on to the exercises. Now, depending on who you talk to, people will recommend all sorts of crazy side swaps and patterns that will get you ready for five balls, both with three and four. I personally find most of them very, very difficult and very confusing, and in fact, harder than the actual five ball pattern. So I don't really recommend doing that, but I do have a few exercises that I do recommend, and I'm gonna teach those to you now. The first thing I wanna talk about with five balls is the height. One of the most common problems I see with people who are learning five balls is that they throw the pattern too low. So in order to figure out how high you should throw it, we're gonna drop four of these. Yeah. One ball. I don't know exactly how high your five ball cascade should go, but for me, I've found a pretty good rule of thumb is that if I lift my hand up, around the top of those fingertips is where I wanna throw the ball. That's about how high it should go. Yeah, right about there. So take a moment and feel how high that is for you and practice it with one ball. The next exercise I want you to do is pick up three balls and we're gonna start juggling. Now with three balls, there's a couple different exercises you can do to prep yourself for the five ball cascade. The first exercise I wanna give you is doing a three ball flash at five ball height. So we're gonna throw all three of them up pretty quickly at that five ball height and our hand will be empty for two beats. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Two beats where your hands are empty. Practice doing that back and forth. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that three ball flash is a good exercise. It can really help you. But the next two that I'm gonna show you are, in my opinion, the best exercises for five balls. So pay attention. Are you paying attention? All right, here we go. The next three ball exercise I have for you talks about dwell time. Dwell time is the amount of time that the prop is in your hand before you throw it again. Some patterns have a long dwell time, some patterns have a short dwell time. For the next two exercises, we're gonna be playing with that dwell time to make things harder for ourselves to get us ready for five balls. So to start, I want you to just do three balls at a five ball height. Just a three ball cascade. Do that for a second. Not too hard, right? Next, I want you to do that same thing, but try to hold each ball as long as possible before you have to let it go to catch that other ball coming in. If you're having a hard time understanding that concept of dwell time, try thinking about it as as many seconds as possible between each throw, but still maintaining that same height. Try counting between each throw. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 It, you sound kind of silly, but that's the idea, is you want to have as much time between each throw. You want to hold onto that ball as long as possible before you let it go. So practice that one, and then you can move on to its sister, who I think is even cooler and actually more helpful. So that last exercise, we held the ball for as much time as possible before throwing it again. We had the longest amount of dwell time. In this next exercise, we're going to hold the ball for as short amount of time as possible, or the least amount of dwell time. Again, we're gonna be throwing at that same five ball height, but now when the ball comes down, I want you to immediately get rid of it. Yeah, it should feel kind of chaotic and it should be kind of hard. Here's the short dwell time exercise we just did and the long dwell time exercise we did right before that. Here they are side by side. Notice that in the long dwell time pattern on the left, I'm holding the balls a lot longer than I am in the short dwell time pattern on the right. Practice both of those two exercises. When you practice them, make sure you're putting them at that five ball height. None of it's going to matter if you're not doing it at the right height. And you also don't want them to be going all over the place. You want accuracy, you want precision. Aim for the spots that you know you're gonna be aiming for when you do five balls. So don't be doing this. 
That's not how we're gonna juggle five balls. Make sure you're hitting the same spots over and over again. And with the long dwell time, same thing. We're not doing this. That's not the point. The point is to hit the spots that we will be throwing when we throw five balls. Those are all the exercises I recommend with three balls. Now there's one really good one that I recommend with a fourth ball, so go find it. So with four balls, you could just practice the five ball pattern with four balls, where you throw all of them up, there's a beat, and you catch them all. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That can be a helpful one if you want, but the one I'm about to show you now is called five, five, two. And I think it really, really captures what five balls feels like without having to have that fifth ball. So five, five, two is a four ball side swap where you're crossing the throws at five ball height, but you're alternating right, left, left, right. Like this, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right. Breaking that down, I recommend doing right, left, left, right, and then stopping. Right, left, left, right, stop. Right, left, left, right, stop. Again, the important thing to remember is keeping them at the five ball height, keeping them all the exact same height. So practice just doing one rotation, right, left, left, right, then add a second one. Right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right. Then you can practice that one infinitely to get you really, really solid and ready to go with that fifth ball. Speaking of, once you feel good with those exercises, let's pick up a fifth one. All right, look at all these, these bean bags. We've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff going on now. I wanna talk about how to hold all of this stuff correctly. So we're gonna have two balls in our non-dominant hand and three balls in our dominant hand. So when we're holding three balls in one hand, that can be kind of confusing. So I'm gonna break it down. First ball you're gonna hold between your thumb and your index finger. That's normal. Second ball we're gonna hold in our palm. This is pretty similar to how we hold two when we were doing four. But now the third ball, we're gonna open up these two fingers here and we're gonna put that right there. Now the order that we're gonna release these is one, two, three. One, two, three. That's also the order that we should catch them in. One, two, three. All right, now that you know how to release the balls, let's start throwing them. The first thing you're going to do is work on your five ball flash. That's where we throw all five balls up and catch them all. Just work on those first five throws. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I cannot stress enough how important these first five throws are. If you're not solid with your first five throws, you can't expect the next five to be good. The most important thing to remember is that when you do this, make sure all the balls are going the same height and make sure they're going high enough. Don't make them so low. I know it's hard to get all the balls out and you're probably not used to throwing that high. So you're gonna have the tendency to wanna rush them all out really fast and low. Use your full extension of your arms and get those balls up where they're supposed to be. So practice that flash, just five catches. One, two, three, four, five. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five. When you feel comfortable with that, you can do a sixth throw. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you can add a seventh throw and an eighth throw and so on and so forth until you can eventually do the five ball cascade. All right, so practice all of those exercises. And I mean all of them. Just because you start working on that five ball exercise doesn't mean you should ignore the four and the three ball exercises. Those are really valuable and you should incorporate all of them into your daily five ball juggling practice. Yes, I did say daily. Juggling five balls is really difficult and you're not going to get it without putting a lot of practice in. I highly recommend putting 10 or 15 minutes every single day into your five ball practice. I covered a lot of the common mistakes I see sort of sprinkled throughout this tutorial, but there's a couple more that I wanna talk about real fast and that's what we're gonna go over now. So the most common mistake that people have when they're learning higher numbers is that they throw their very first throw of the pattern much lower than the rest of their pattern. What that does is causes a kind of chaotic rush to get all the balls up and it's just not a good idea. You're probably holding three balls in one hand for the first time and releasing that first ball and it's awkward, it's weird. It's going to be difficult, but you need to practice that release. You need to practice throwing them all the same height, including that very first ball. So when you do it, make sure you're intentional with that first throw and make sure it's the same height as the rest of your pattern. 
next mistake I see all the time is just like with anything, people bring up their hands and they bring up their shoulders and they try to juggle it up here. Gravity works, guys. Bring your hands down, bring your shoulders down. Keep your hands at your hips, not at your chest, like this. If you're practicing up here, you're gonna have a harder time keeping your pattern going longer. First of all, you're not gonna be able to go as high with your pattern and you're gonna end up causing a lot of strain on your wrists and probably get carpal tunnel. Don't rely on your shoulders or your wrists to get those throws out. Use the extent of your arm, use your biceps to get those balls high enough. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Hopefully these exercises help you. If they did, please leave a comment and let me know. That makes me feel great. And also give this video a like and consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you can be notified when I release more awesome, cool tutorials. If you're looking for some affordable, good quality bean bags, I now have my Taylor Dries bean bags for sale on jugglingwarehouse.com. You can buy them in sets of three or individually. So there's no excuse not to get five and start learning the five ball cascade. I'll put a link to that in the description. Lastly, if you want to show extra support, you can head over to Patreon and become a member of my Otter Club, where you can get access to all sorts of exclusive goodies, including early access to my videos and merchandise. So go check that out. And that's all I have for you today. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Ah. Oh, that's a big spider. That's a scary spider. Good thing it's all the way up there. Scary. So don't be doing this. I can't even do it. That's how that's how wrong it is. <laughs>